the Lib Dems. Remember them? Well, the Lib Dems have produced a new party political broadcast. Link below. They also have a new slogan, Open, Tolerant and United, which as an acronym is OTTAWA. And a rather useful exclamation for those seeing Tiny Tim Farron, the Lib Dem leader, who occasionally pops up in Parliament, though as the party only have nine seats, he no longer gets an automatic question at PMQs, thus saving the Lib Dems money on their licensing agreement with Games Workshop. Orf, orf. However, in the House of Lords, the Lib Dems have 102 members, and therefore the Lib Dems will no doubt use this presence to play their traditional role in politics, that of stabbing their allies in the back, while declaring that they are about to become the party of government. But, to be fair, the Lib Dems do stick to their principles. They will say anything and do anything to get elected, and when and if they do get elected, they will do the opposite of what they said they would do, stab their allies in the back and begin the process all over again, and all in the name of the Progressive Centre. The Bermondsey by-election, linked below, perhaps exemplifies the Lib Dem campaigning style best. The Liberals ran an openly homophobic campaign against Peter Tatchell, whilst fielding a closet gay man, Simon Hughes, themselves, with the result that they split the Labour vote, Labour being at the time in one of its periodic splits anyway, and Mr Hughes was elected. But Rather than rake over the coals, let's move on to the latest wheeze from the Lib Dem dirty tricks machine. Since the Brexit stroke Lexit vote, the Lib Dems have filled their idle hours by branding Leave voters stupid and Nazis and telling anyone who will listen why they are deluded for wanting to leave the EU and banging the drum for staying in. Thus no one is surprised that the candidate they have chosen to stand in northwest Leicestershire, pronounced Northwest Haysborough for American listeners, is Michael Wyatt. A good choice, you might say. He is a local man, he has a time served on the local council, he clearly feels passionate about the current MP's failings. I have decided to stand against Andrew Bridgen because I am sick and tired of North West Leicestershire getting a raw deal. We seem to have an MP who was all talk and no action. Oh, and Mr Wyatt is also in favour of Brexit, stroke Lexit, and is quoted as saying he wants to push for a Brexit deal that allows the country to take back control of our immigration policy, which in the current lexicon means he wants to leave the single market, I think. And for those wondering, North West Leicestershire voted 60.7 to 39.3 to leave the EU. My reason for bringing this up is not just that the Lib Dems are up to their usual two-faced games, but because of the claim that Tory MP Andrew Bridgen seems all talk and no action. In December 2015, Mr Bridgen was the target of a smear campaign, linked below, in which anonymous leaflets were sent through the internal parliamentary mail system accusing him of unspecified crimes. The Poison Pen campaign began after Mr Bridgen reported a senior MP to the police for serious criminal activities. And he then made somewhat of a name for himself in the run-up to the Brexit vote when he committed the cardinal sin in politics of telling the truth. David Cameron has placed himself front and centre of a disingenuous Remain campaign, 
setting himself at odds with half of the parliamentary party and 70% of our members and activists on the most important issue facing our country in a generation, Mr Bridgin said. Whatever the result, I believe his position will be untenable. And then, to cap an eventful year, Mr Bridgin became involved in the Keith Vaz Rent Boy affair, linked below, with Keith Vaz claiming Mr Bridgin had damaged his reputation <laughs> by referring his conduct to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner. For those unaware, link below, Mr Vaz, then chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee, was filmed having sex with two East European male prostitutes. There was some stuff about cocaine and poppers and Mr Vaz claiming that he was an industrial washing machine salesman called Jim. Oh, and something about where he got the money to buy the flat. It was all pretty much just another day in the world of Teflon Keith Vaz. Link below. And to be fair, Mr Bridgin was arrested in 2011. Link below over allegations of sexual assault. But before you get your hopes up, the police dropped the case shortly afterwards and there was no video. Link below. And I noticed Mr Bridgin was a Royal Marine. I mention this because it would suggest that Mr Wyatt's claim about Mr Bridgin being all talk and no action might not be true. Unless, of course, he is referring to matters relating to his constituency, which is always something best left to the voters, I feel. This is a situation to watch, as no doubt the Lib Dems will be doing more of this, standing as the, anti, as the pro-EU party and fielding anti-EU candidates. In addition to muddying the waters in the House of Lords, in the hope of getting Otto Tiny Tim Farron raised to a status just above mockery. Oh, and you can bet that the stuff I have mentioned about Mr. Bridgen's unspecified crimes will be dragged up during the campaign. This is the Lib Dems. After all... <laughs>